and welcome to Heidi Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting and common childhood pathology, and that is the rotavirus infection. So let's get started. So what is the rotavirus? The rotavirus infection is a very contagious viral infection that causes extreme diarrhea, fever, and vomiting. It is the most common cause of diarrhea in infants and children worldwide and results in over 215,000 deaths annually. The virus itself infects and damages the cells that line the small intestine and causes a gastroenteritis, which is often called the stomach flu. The rotavirus is a highly contagious and easily transmissible virus, but when older children and adults get the rotavirus, they have a much milder illness. They have less diarrhea and are less likely to become dehydrated. Fortunately, today a vaccine is now available to help protect our children against the rotavirus. So from this definition of the rotavirus, we get that it's a very common and very contagious viral infection that commonly causes extreme diarrhea and vomiting in children. So it's actually the most common cause of diarrhea in infants and children worldwide and actually results in about 215,000 deaths annually. And this is because of its extreme associated risk with dehydration in these patients. So once one contracts the virus, it actually invades and infects the small intestine and damages the cells that line the intestine. And that's why the symptoms are very GI orientated, meaning the diarrhea and vomiting is GI driven. So the virus is actually very contagious and very easily transmittable. But luckily, when adults or older children get the infection, they usually have a much milder illness and don't suffer the severe bouts of dehydration. And the last point here to mention, which is a very important point, is that a vaccine has now been created and is available to help protect children from getting the rotavirus. So now that we know what the basics of the rotavirus is, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So the rotavirus is present in stool and is mainly transmitted between hand and mouth contact, which means an oral fecal route. If one touches a person or an object carrying the virus and then touches their mouth, one could develop the infection. So the disease is most easily transmitted from not washing one's hands after using the toilet or changing diapers of a child who's infected with the virus. And infants and children under the age of three are at the highest risk for developing the rotavirus infection and being in daycares or kindergartens also raises their risk. So if we look at these images below, we can see how quickly and how easily this virus is actually able to spread. So the virus is actually present in the stool of the patient. And one thing that most kids who are getting potty trained in around two to three years of age are very guilty of is not washing their hands after they visit the bathroom. So if a child does do a poo and then doesn't wash their hands, but gets that fecal matter on their hands, they can actually transmit the fecal matter, which contains the virus to multiple objects. So we have the toilet paper, which becomes infected, the walls, and even their hands, which remain infected. They then go onto the playground. So another thing these little ones are guilty of is not washing their hands. So that means the virus remains on their hands. So when they go onto the playground or touch the toys which are being shared amongst them and their friends, the virus actually is transmitted to those toys. And then if it lands on somebody else and then they touch their mouth or eat some food without washing their hands, they actually contract the virus in this way. And so the disease goes on. So the disease can also be spread to mums or nannies or childcare providers during the changing of a dirty diaper. Because once that virus lands on their hand and they touch their mouth or they eat something without washing their hands, they could develop the infection. So this mode of transmission is actually called the oral fecal route of transmission, which means to the mouth from fecal material. So now let's explore some signs and symptoms of the rotavirus. So because the virus itself infects and damages the cells that line the small intestine, the symptoms are mostly GI related, so gastrointestinal related. The most common symptoms of the rotavirus are a severe watery diarrhea, vomiting, fever, and abdominal pain. So additional symptoms may include a loss of appetite and dehydration, and this occurs due to that severe loss of bodily fluids which is especially dangerous for infants and younger children. So the most important thing we want to prevent in the rotavirus infection 
is actually the onset of dehydration in these patients. So kids need to be well rested and well hydrated all the time to ensure that they're not developing a dehydration process. So some general symptoms of dehydration include a decreased urination, a dry mouth and throat, feeling dizzy when standing up, and crying with few or no tears, and unusual sleepiness or fussiness. So this is actually some signs which can tell you that your child has reached the dehydration stage of the rotavirus. So the vomiting in these patients occurs about 10 to 15 times a day, and they have these bouts of watery diarrhea from 10 to 20 times a day, and then they have this very high fever, which is about 39 degrees Celsius or higher. And these symptoms usually last for about three to seven days. The diagnosis of the rotavirus. So the rotavirus is often diagnosed based on the symptoms and the physical exam. So if the patient has a history of extreme diarrhea, vomiting, and they have an extreme fever on presentation, we can actually put the presumptive diagnosis of the rotavirus. So the rotavirus can also be detected in stool specimens from children with gastroenteritis by several techniques, including electron microscopy, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, antigen detection assays, reverse transcription polyamorase chain reaction, and as well as the virus isolation. So all these techniques can also be done to confirm the diagnosis of the rotavirus, but this is usually not necessary in most cases. But to do these various techniques, we request a sample of stool, so the fecal matter is collected to test for the presence of the rotavirus, and then the stool is actually prepared in a laboratory and is tested in various ways, which can prove the presence of the rotavirus in the stool sample, and in this way the disease can accurately be diagnosed. So now that we know the various ways in which one can diagnose the disease, let's take a closer look at how one can prevent this disease. So as I mentioned in the first slide, the rotavirus vaccine is the best way to protect a child against the rotavirus disease. So without vaccination, almost all children will have at least one episode of the rotavirus diarrhea before they turn five years old. There are currently two types of rotavirus vaccines which are available worldwide. They are available under these brand names, Rotarix, which is RV1, and Rotatech, which is RV5, and both vaccines are effective. The vaccines are usually given in liquid form by mouth and the child will need two doses of Rotorix and three doses of Rotatech and doses are usually given at least four weeks apart. So the great thing about this disease is that we do have this vaccine which is available worldwide and is usually given to infants starting at two months of age. So this vaccine is given orally and is highly effective and depending on which vaccine either the Rotatech which needs to be done in three doses, or the Rotorix, which is done in two doses, the child will be protected sufficiently from developing the disease. So because the disease is actually responsible for causing severe dehydration, especially in children under the age of five, it's always better to be safe rather than sorry, so vaccination definitely comes highly recommended. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of the rotavirus. So in terms of treatment, the goal here is to ensure that the patient stays hydrated and comfortable while the virus works its way out of their system. So the advice given here is to drink plenty of fluids, eat broth-based soups, take pedialyte or other fluids with electrolytes, and this is especially important for children, and eat a diet of bland foods such as white toast and saltines. Parents are also instructed to avoid sugary or fatty foods as these can actually make the diarrhea worse in their children. So hospitalization will only be required for infections that have caused severe dehydration. And this is especially the case in children and they're usually under the age of two. So here the doctor will administer the intravenous or IV fluids to help prevent life-threatening complications of the disease. And that brings us to the end of this video on the rotavirus. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And please make sure to turn on your bell notification so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.